Greetings, brothers and sisters in this world. Greetings in the name of the Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth, Yahweh the I Am, and His Holy Son, Yeshua. Greetings in their names. Greetings also in the name of His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor of Ethiopia, the elect of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the defender of the faith, which faith, the faith of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Christ, whom the Romans call Jesus Christ. It's the same, one God, one aim, one destiny. But I'm here to reveal to you certain things that has been hidden. You see, certain things have been hidden because it is so to be done. If you read Proverbs 25 verse 2, it says, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out the matter. Proverbs 25 verse 2. So we must search diligently for the truth and when we find it, we must accept it and share it. This is what I intend to do today. My name is Llewellyn Smith. I'm the author of two books. David, Kingdom Come. You see below there, the story about the truth. The truth about the story. Everything in here is truth. I also have another book. It's called The True Jew. The true Jew. His imperial majesty represents the true Jew. And evidence in the book will teach you and show you of his glorious appearance on earth and the purpose of it. He is the power of the Holy Trinity. Haile Selassie first. You see, I say here in this book, it says the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. In this book, you will find records of who we call the Chinese, who I say they are the children of Cain. And representation pictures will be shown in this book. All the writings would be in red, the writings of it, the word of Christ will be in red in this book. This, this book is a colored book. Anyhow, that's enough for now. These two books I would like to sell to you all, so you all can read them and give your own opinion of it. Critique it. Call me and criticize it. Call me and enlighten me. I am just about the truth. Teach me. Thank you. What you understand. Teach me what you understand. For there is a great, a great work ahead of all of us, you know. A great work to serve Christ on earth, to serve each other. For one new commandment Christ said he left, you know, that you love one another as he has loved us. Okay. So I'm here to talk to you about these books. And the reason why I want you all to buy them is because this is my understanding of the, of the Bible and things. And let me speak to you on those matters now. The Church of Christ is the Church of God. And there are two folds. The eternal salvation. One is the redemption of Israel. And the second is the salvation of the Gentiles, whosoever will may come. Now, this church I'm telling you about was founded by Christ himself on the earth. And if you look at Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18, it speaks of this. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. The Spirit of God showed Peter the truth. That's why... Those who really worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. This church, the Church of Christ, was released to the world on that day by Christ. The Spirit of God. Let me read for you from Matthew. Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 through 18. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I am the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say 
that thou art John the Baptist, son of Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This, this church of Christ is a special church against which the gates of hell cannot prevail. That must be understood. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Remember that. Remember those things are given to us in the true church. His imperial majesty now, he is the elect of God. When he speaks, he speaks of Christ. When he came to visit us in Trinidad in 1966, 1966, the 18th of April, I was there, I was 11 years old, I went out to see him and he saw me, he, he signaled us all, he gave us a blessing and a head signal. He brought us two lions, Judy and Punch, in Trinidad, and he blessed us. And from that day to now, I always been just seeking the Holy Bible and the Holy Scripture and the Holy God. I always just love God. And this is it. So I sought him out and I now see who he is. His imperial majesty is elect of God. When he speaks, he speaks only of Christ. Extended his hand. He extended his hand to us, the dispersed throughout the world, including Trinidad. But one must be reminded of his words when he extended that. Look at this book here. This is the book called the true Jew. At the back of the book here, so there's a speech from His Majesty. I'm going to read it for you. Right here. His Majesty says, As we extend the hand of universal brotherhood without regard to race or color, so we condemn any social or political order which distinguishes among God's children on this most specious of grounds. Specious is S-P-E-C-I-O-U-S. Look it up and you'll see what it means. It means fake, false or so. So be careful. Don't join any social or political order that distinguishes among God's children. We are all God's children and we must accept Christ. His Majesty has extended the hand of universal brotherhood. Understand it. We don't need anybody else. This universal brotherhood is extended to us by His Imperial Majesty and it is based on a unity in Christ. So get that clear and let's continue. Yeah, you can get this book if you want to. It's an Amazon. The star. Yeah? This is the book. The True Jew. This is the star of victory in the back there. We'll talk about this later on. Yeah, specious mean false, you know? So that now we who know these things now and are searching for truth now, we go to the Bible. Because His Majesty told us. This is His Majesty words, you know. I'm telling you, His Majesty told us that we must read the Bible and find truth for ourselves. As His Majesty words, okay? Great King, He told us to do that. So I'm doing it. I hope you can do it too. Specious, he says in this speech, it means false. So, reading the Bible, I come across the things that will happen in the future, which is our time now. I'm advising you with everybody else and myself, because God has guided me, that we must be cautious of false prophets and false Christs. This is a warning from Christ himself, from his mouth. And this is in Matthew, St. Matthew, the same book, St. Matthew, one of the Gospels, St. Matthew 7, verses, I'm going to read it for you, 14, 15, and 16. This is not any joke business. St. Matthew 7, 
You could write it down so you could check it out later if you want. Matthew 7 verses 14, 15, 16. Verse 14. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Try to be one of the few too. Verse 15. Beware. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. This is our Bible. This is the word from Christ. You know. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Think about that. So I'm going on. Careful. So this is how I know from through the scriptures I know that some people may try to lead Rastafarians astray with such claims false Christ Emmanuel's and false prophets prophet this and prophet that but the truth will ultimately surface and put all liars and thieves to shame and to eternal death one's face must be based on the truth the emperor fulfilled his duty to the Christ and the Father by his defense of the true faith. I know that his imperial majesty knew of these false prophets and these false Christs by his speech out of his own lips. For he made a world tour, he visited the world, you know, in that same 1966 when I told you I saw him, I was 11 years old. I was attending primary school. But I passed common entrance with the blessings and I continued on seeking and searching and trying to find and I found what I found. I'm trying to share it with you now. You see, there's a speech that His Majesty say that actually that it tells me that he knew all these things. I'll, I'll find it. It's in, it's in my book. <laughs> in my book, I'm going to find it for you and just read it to you. See these things when you know it, when you see it. Right. It's in this book. David Kingdom Come. That's my website. That's everything. That's why I'm dealing with the kingdom of David that come in his imperial majesty. The 225th king from Menelik the first. Good. I'm going to read this piece for you and you tell me what you think and you take note of it. But you can buy the book and read it. This is on page 120 in David Kingdom come. His Majesty says, A house built on granite and strong foundations, not even the onslaught of pouring rain, gushing torrents, and strong winds will be able to pull down. Some people have written the story of my life, His Majesty, you know, he knew it all the time, representing as truth, what in fact derives from ignorance, error, or envy. These are the things that make people misrepresent His Imperial Majesty. Ignorance, error, or envy. Imagine that. Envy? Hmm. But they cannot shake the truth from its place, even if they attempt to make others believe it. So his majesty says, Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This is the way of his imperial majesty. This is the thing I try to show you certain things about his majesty that I put in my book so that people could understand and, and make their choices. In this book you will find words of his imperial majesty to which you will be able to def to define the true character of His Imperial Majesty. In an address to the World Council of Churches, His Majesty was a member of the World Council of Churches, Ethiopian Church. He was the head of it. He, he joined the World Council of Churches. And he held a meeting in Addis Ababa. It's on page 116 in this book. I want to teach you something from it. And then you can go and read it for yourself and buy a book and keep it home and check out all these things. But His Majesty speaks on the Bible here in this book too. And I'm not going into that right now. You could read that on your own. 
page 116. That's what I want to share. His Majesty, His Majesty's address to the World Council of Churches. It was held in Addis Ababa. And this is what His Majesty says in the fourth paragraph, the beginning of the fourth paragraph. I underline it in the book in case you buy the book. It's easy for you to find it. How long will we, His Majesty saying this, eh? to all the people who are representing the World Council of Churches from different places in Europe and, you know what I mean? Otherwise. He says, How long will we who are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, who are taught by the same Holy Bible, continue to remain divided among ourselves? So right here we see that His Majesty has told us that he's a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wants to know why, if we taught by the same Bible, why we continue to remain divided under foolish religions and cults. Why don't we all just accept Christ's Holy Spirit and follow his imperial majesty's way of dealing with the poor, and the needy, the education, the health, everything. He has the way because he is the what? Defender of the faith, the true faith of Christ. He is also the Lion of Judea, conquering and to conquer. We must work for him through Christ. We must carry this mission it's because he had the truth. All the liars will feel it. So this is what we're showing you. This is about his majesty's real character. He says who he is. He says he's a disciple of the Lord. His majesty says that in this also. I can tell you straight up and tell the world he is not his imperial majesty is not christ in his king the character as some false prophets and people would have you believe for their own benefit i suppose you know because christ in his kingly character is our lord yeshua in his second advent, when he comes to redeem his people, Israel, he will come with angels. And it is written, the same one you see going up, is the same one you see coming up. So these people have rearranged the Bible and the thoughts in the Bible and made false claims and have captured a lot of Rastafarians because it is written that many will be fooled by these false people. Many will be fooled. But there are some that cannot be fooled at all because of God's great will, Christ's great doing. His imperial majesty is the elect of God and the defender of the true faith. He is the true disciple of our Lord. He is the first power of the Holy Trinity. Highly Selassie the first. That's what it means. The power of the Holy Trinity the first. It is he who extends the hand of universal brotherhood to all. It is he that did it. Extend that hand. I accept it. You may accept it too. Once you understand it, it's coming from him, the conquering lion. He extends the hand of universal brotherhood to all, regardless of race or color. No, nobody tell about you. You're not black enough or you're not white enough or you're not brown enough to be any part of this. The emperor not deal with that. And we not deal with people like that. It is... He who extends that hand of universal brotherhood. That universal means the whole land, every way that it have a man, any way it have a man. He extends that hand to them. Universal brotherhood to all, regardless of race or color. Yeah. Yeah. Because I will tell you why. Look at my book again. You will see it on the back page here. Because His Majesty says, above all, Ethiopia is dedicated to the principle of the equality of all men irrespective of differences of race, color, or creed. As we do not permit discrimination in within our nation, so we oppose it wherever it is found. Ja, that's who I am. I'm an opposer with the king, the Ethiopians, who love the true way of Christ. I continue to tell you about these things. Yes, sir. 20 minutes coming up. You see, this universal brotherhood is based on our unity in the love of Christ. And Christ made 
one new covenant. He fulfilled all the others and he made a new one. And he made it possible that we so will never be fooled by any false prophet or any false leader, any false Christ. We will never be fooled because Christ made this new covenant to make sure that we can resist and overcome all these things. It is, it is possible for us because it's in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 8. I'm going to show you something where I'm telling you now, don't follow folly. Follow your heart and follow your mind. You know, this is what I'm about. Follow your heart and your mind. Folly, folly. People talk a lot of things for their own benefit and not for Christ's benefit. Not for the benefit of the church. Not for the benefit of the people. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. I'll start from verse 7 just to make you understand what's going on. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been found, have been sought, sorry, for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. His majesty say, I am Judah. Understand what's going on. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. That's what have we have. We're born with it. We just have to stick to it. The Lord has put his laws into our mind and write them in their hearts. In our hearts, we really want to do the law of God. So let's maintain it. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people, and they shall not, they shall not, they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother. Say, know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. This is the covenant. So, Nobody other teaches us that nobody can lead us anyway. Once we follow what the Lord had put in our minds and in our hearts, we'll live forever with Him too. But we must share it with everybody and everybody must try to reach to that form of spirituality. Right. This is why I write my books for, so I can put out what, you know, you can read it when you get a chance, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Many false things going on. You have to be wise. You have to seek it for yourself. It is he, his majesty, who extends that hand, right? And the new covenant is made by Christ. And he is the one that fulfills it. And he is the one that shed the hand for us to be brothers with it. And I'm accepting it. And I'm asking you to accept it too. But search it out to make sure that your faith is right with what you believe in your heart and your mind. Yeah. It is... It is in our minds. It is written upon our hearts. The children of the new covenant are protected from false prophets and false Christ. By this work of Yeshua the Christ, he had done a great work to save us from those people. Uh, uh, we look at St. Matthew chapter 12, verse 50. Chapter 12, verse 50. I'm going to find it for you now. I'm going to read it for you. about that chapter 12 verse 50 it says here in the holy scriptures king james version Schofield reference bible okay for whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother and sister and mother that's what we understand that's why it's majesty stretch for the hand of universal brotherhood to all regardless of race of color is spirit we're dealing with unity based on that spirit of Christ okay now why we choose Ethiopia you know Ethiopia is in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation many people don't know or don't care or they don't check because they're looking at Rome all the time but I'm telling you Rome wasn't in Genesis 
is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 13. You're going to see Ethiopia there. Chapter 2, verse 13, it says, And the same, and the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. In book of Numbers, chapter 12, we see Ethiopia being mentioned again. And Miriam and Aaron speak against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Moses linked Israel and Ethiopia from the beginning of the nation of Israel. His sons Gershom and the other one were part of Israel. Ethiopia is connected by God's will. In, in, in the book of Kings, you see the Ethiopian queen come down and book of Kings, 1 Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter 10. You see the Ethiopian queen. She came to the king. She had heard reports about this great kingdom. And when she came, here, what she say in verse 9, chapter 10, verse 9. Here what she said. Blessed be the Lord thy God. She, the Ethiopians, always blessing the Lord, the God of Israel. They always, we always blessing that Lord, for we know who he is and what he had done. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee, to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever, and therefore made he thee king to do judgment. Ethiopians are there joining again to make this lineage from which Haile Selassie came. This is the lineage of Ethiopia linking with Israel through Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, okay? We go on. I see it is mentioned also in Jeremiah. It is the Ethiopians. They have been in the house since when you read in Jeremiah, you see one named Ebedmelech. Ebed Melek. He was an Ethiopian eunuch who saved Jeremiah's life. Now remember, you know, it was Jeremiah himself now who testified of God's oath to destroy Judah's lineage in Jerusalem. This is in Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 24. You all must check it out and see what, what we're talking about here because very important, very, very important to understand these things and know how is Ethiopia connected to Jerusalem? How is it connected to Jeremiah the prophet that cast out, Jeremiah is the prophet, you know, that cast out Judah, who was under Solomon in Jerusalem. That's Rehoboam lineage, he cast it out. Yeah, I'm going to show you. When when it when this lineage is done to uh, Zedekiah, look at this in Jeremiah chapter twenty two verse twenty four. Hear this now. This is a very solemn vow from the Lord. You know, he says, "As I live," said the Lord. Jeremiah telling the people, "As I live," said the Lord. Dokonia, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with a signet upon my right hand, yet will I pluck thee hence. Right. We go down to verse 30 of the same chapter we're going to see now. Thus said the Lord, write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. This taking place in 609 BC. Our Lord had already transferred his kingdom of Judah to Ethiopia in about 992 BC, about 300 years or so before. And while the, the, the kingdom progressing in, in Jerusalem, it was just progressing to go to the point of captivity. Captivity from Babylon and never again for a king to rule in Judah in God's name in Jerusalem. This is the word of God and I have seen it never happen since. Once they appointed a man named Herod, but he was an Edomite and it was Caesar who did that so he could control Israelites. When our Lord came, the same Herod tried to kill our Lord as an infant. But he didn't know that our Lord would come into advance. 
He would come first to lay down his life for us to shed his blood and lay down his life. And he would come to resurrect and show us that there is resurrection and eternal life. And then he would come again when we were ready for him. That's why we have the Imperial Majesty come in his name to defend that faith. He would come again soon and he would take those that are ready and prepared for him. So we see here in Jeremiah that this was, you know, seized. This, this, this lineage of Rehoboam, the son of Solomon in Jerusalem, went down many generations, you know, we have the lineage, you can find it in the Bible, all the different kings from Rehoboam to Jeconias. You see? And then the Lord stopped it and said, no more. But at, when the Lord stopped it, there was already the Davidic covenant. So what happened then? That's what people don't know. The Davidic covenant was extended to Ethiopia. That's how we have King Haile Selassie chasing himself back to David to show us the truth. People must understand these things. The royal family of David is in Ethiopia. It would be the only restoration of Judah after the word of God, where the word of God cast Judah out of Jerusalem. But he had also said, there will never be short of a king from David. So here we have Ethiopia carrying it on. Therefore, after Christ's first advent, as the Lamb of God in Judah of Jerusalem, there has never been a king to sit upon the throne of David and rule. You understand? Yeah. So, the only king of Judah we could look for is a king of Judah from Ethiopia, and we found him in this imperial majesty. You see, he's the land of Judah that has come to prevail over the existing captivity of the Roman Empire, which was broken down onto the European Empire, which has enslaved us and oppressed us and colonized us over the years. But they were never able to impress his majesty, oppress his majesty, or take over his majesty place. It's the only land in Africa, the only country that has never been colonized. It is the free country, never been colonized. They tried and they failed. They tried and they failed. This, 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 this when they failed, this was 1935, you know. 1935, Mussolini invaded Ethiopia with the blessings of the Pope to take it over to try to misrepresent Christ again in the earth. But the true defender of the faith, he defended it. And when he came back in five years, exactly to the date, on the fifth of the fifth month, Revelation 5, 5, you will find these things about the land of Judah. And he came back, this is what he made and designed for us to bear. This is called the star of victory. The star of victory, 1941. Okay, you see a crown on top of the cross? The star of victory is to the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. And we follow him for the victory is ours also. Italy, time is up for spreading the word of Christ and the, the true, the true Christian defender of faith is here. And he has spoke to, spoken to us and showed us himself. And it's up to us to seek out his wisdom, seek out his words. Many people have written things about him, things of his words, but people have written things about him was not true. But his words will always remain true. So you check personally for his words and you'll be in a better position in this world. Yeah, Ethiopia, Menelik lineage, that's where it's from. So this is my books are about, and um, all, is <laughs> all is verifiable, so you can call me if you see anything that is not. Yeah, His Imperial Majesty is the 225th King of the dynasty, and the elect of God, and the defender of the true faith of Christ. There are many, many, many titles of his imperial majesty, but you know, none like what they say, Christ and his kingly character and these things. There's, those are not his titles. I would like you all to read, when you buy this book, I would like you all to read page 107 
and see what his majesty says on the bible okay and um, when you go to page 105 I would like you from today only to call his majesty by these names which he procured has procured in the earth these names of, so on page 105 of the kingdom come David kingdom come I'll read out some for you I'm not going through all but you'll get a book and you'll read the rest Ja, most high God you have given us imperial majesty I'm going to read the titles of the emperor for you all. He is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Elect of God, Emperor of Ethiopia, Defender of the Faith, Grand Cordon of the Order of Solomon. I'll stop there. You can read the rest when you buy the book. Get the book. Yeah, I spend my time looking for it to share it with you all. You know, you buy it and check it out. You can get it on Amazon. My name is Llewellyn Smith. L-L-E-W-E-L-L-Y-N-S-M-I-T-H. You may have to put that in to get the book.